Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a PHP, MySQL, and Apache environment. And Docker's really cool because you can switch things out, you can use Nginx or Postgres or whatever um, super easily. So anyway, I'm going to show you how to set up, um, we're going to grab some records from the database and print them to the, sc the screen, to the web browser. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button below and the bell to be notified when we release new tutorials. Most of our videos come with articles, so be sure to check those out as well. And so we're going to take this step by step just to kind of go slow, assuming you don't know Docker that well. So uh, if you look at the instructions, the very first set step in, P in the PHP page is to run a command line script. And so that'll be our first step. So basically what we're doing here is we're, we're so we have an image and containers. So the image is kind of like a class and then the, the container is like the instance of that class. Um, so what we end up with is the containers where all of our code is and you could reuse that image um, multiple times. You can create your own images. So, so this image is PHP 7.4 with command line um, stuff. And then basically what we're going to be doing is in this, um, in this container, we're going to be setting the contents of the existing directory, the directory that we run this, uh, this command from, we're going to be placing that in the containers user SRC slash my app. Then we're going to be setting the working directory, kind of like your present working directory in your command line to user source at my app inside of the container. So if you were to run a script, that file would have to be in that directory or it would be coming from, you know, relative to that, to this location. Uh, and then again, we're, we're going to be running uh, this command, PHP, your script inside of this directory. So that's basically what we're going to do. And then we're going to need a your script.php file for, uh, which is going to be where the code is. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll copy this. I'm going to open up my editor. Here's my project folder. It's completely empty. I just called it PHP Docker. So I'm going to call, we're going to call this Docker file. I think you have to, I don't know, but um, we're going to paste that in here. I'm going to switch this to index. So index.php. I'm going to save that. And then we just need a script. So let's go ahead and create index.php. And then I'm just going to say PHP echo hello from Docker. Okay, so we'll save that. And then now let's go back to the instructions. And it says to run this, we have to build the image and then run the container from that image. So docker build uh, hyphen t my PHP app uh, period. So my PHP app is the name of the image that we're going to be creating. And then we're going to run the container off of that image. Um, and we're going to be calling this container my running app. So let's go ahead and do that. So, uh, okay, so docker build hyphen t my php app dot. And that's going to pull all the information, uh, download stuff, and, and um, build the image. So I'll be, be, back, be back in a second. Okay, and once that image has been built, then we can run the container. So let's go ahead and docker run um, hyphen IT uh, with the name of my running app. So we're gonna call the container my running app and we're gonna base it off of the image which we just created, my PHP app. So let's copy that and paste it into our uh, terminal. And then that is gonna run the, because it's a container and the code is going, we're just gonna run that. So we're going to get hello from Docker inside of our container. So that is successful and we're ready to move on. The next step is to try to get this actually in the browser. And for that, we need a, um, a server like Apache or Nginx or something along those lines. Um, and so in order to do that, well, the documentation explains it. Um, if you scroll down farther, you can see something along the lines of image variants and then it'll give you some Apache information. And let's see here. So without a Docker file, it shows you the port numbers. So we can actually run this command um, in your command line and it will set up a port mapping. And so 
that's going to map the po port on your local machine to the port in the Docker container because it's it's basically doing exactly what it would do on your computer. It's setting up a server, uh, Apache server with the port 80, and that's how you get to localhost. So we're just mapping these two ports together so you can um, so you can reach it from within Docker. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this command, but I have a different command because I'm on Windows and my present working directory is not going to work. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna copy this. And if you're on Win, uh, Unix or something, you can use that, but I'm not. So let's go ahead and run this command. So docker run, uh, and then with the hyphen P that sets the port from 80 on our machine to 80 on the container. We're setting up the name, my Apache hyphen PHP app. Uh, and then here is the, um, the, the, the contents of my folder. So I've got in the users of fast P desktop code tutorials, PHP Docker. That is this, uh, that is where my source code files are. And those are going to be mapped to the var slash www slash HTML inside the container. And this container, this time it's PHP 7.2 Apache. Um, it's just cause that's what they used. So it's unable to find it. So we're going to have to download some stuff again. So I'll see you again soon. Okay, so once that has been completed, we should be able to go to localhost, eight, port 80, or just localhost, and see the code from inside of our container running on, um, you know, on our local machine. So let's go ahead and try localhost. And we'll just do port 80 just to see. And we get hello from Docker. And so let's go ahead and try to see if we can change it. So hello, I'm gonna say Docker stuff. So I'm gonna save that and then refresh and you can see our changes are being made and that is again because we have um we're setting up a bind mount or a volume um from our local machine into the container so that's how that works and so that's pretty much it we're, we're ready now to set up docker compose and um MySQL and all that kind of stuff so i'm gonna go ahead and docker stop uh Docker stop and docker ps hyphen a hyphen q. This is just basically stopping the containers. Okay, so that should be good. And now we can go ahead and create our Docker compose file. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So in our project, we'll create a new file, docker hyphen compose dot yml. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and paste some code in here. Basically what we're doing is we're setting the version of Docker Compose to 3.1, and then we're setting up the services, uh, which is basically just like each one, each one represents like a separate container. So this container's name is going to be named PHP, and then it's going to be using the image PHP 7.4 hyphen Apache uh, with the ports 8080, again mapping on the left side our port and then the right side the containers port and then we're also going to be uh, setting up a volume for our code our source files and that's going to be in this time the dot slash src uh, and then on our local computer and then var www.html on the container so this time we're going to need to move our index uh, file into a source folder so let's go ahead and do that uh, new folder, SRC, and then I'm just gonna move it in there. Okay, and then that basically all we need to do now, is, so we have the same exact setup, but we're just using Docker Compose. So now we should be able to run, uh, make sure everything is saved first, so save that, and then it should be able to run Docker Compose up, Docker Compose up hyphen D, you don't have to put the D in there, but I like to, um, the, yeah, the other, otherwise it's interactive and it, it takes over the shell. So let's go ahead and run it again and let's test our code just to make sure that it's still working. I'll get rid of it this time. So save, 
then refresh and we have it working. So Docker compose file is working. So now let's go ahead and add um, our MySQL images. Okay, so go ahead and hot head over to the MySQL Docker page and they actually give you a little bit more information if you head down a little bit, they'll give you a Docker compose file, which is pretty nice. Uh, so they, and they use AdMiner. Um, I tried to use PHP my admin, but it was kind of a pain. Um, so I gave up and just went with what everybody else uses. So um, basically here what we're doing is we're setting up another service. This one's called DB, uh, and then this one's called AdMiner. And so that's how you would connect um, to these different containers. And I'll sh you'll see that, how that works in a sec. So let's go, and then... Okay, so this image is MySQL. We're setting up some plugin stuff um, and then you know, restart. And then we've got the environment variable. We're setting that to MySQL root password. Uh, we're setting this to example, so that's the password. And then AdMiner, we're setting up the port 8080 to 8080. So if we wanna get to AdMiner, uh, we're gonna be posting, but we just have to visit 8080. So let's go ahead and check that out. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste to my code editor. And so docker compose file and boom. I hope that, f darn it. My text editor is supposed to be smart enough to fix this, but it's not. Okay, boom, boom. I think that is correct. Okay, so we've got, the indentation doesn't matter in Docker Compose. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and see how that works. So we'll hit save, and then we'll do Docker Compose up again. Uh, did I close this down? No, I didn't. Okay, before you, you also wanna make sure you close it down. So Docker hyphen compose down. Okay, and so we made our saves ready. So let's go ahead and run Docker Compose up D again. And this time it's going to grab MySQL and add Miner. Let's all see you again soon. Okay, and so once that's done, uh, you should be able to see how um, everything's working still. But if you go to localhost 8080 this time, we should be able to have access to add Miner. And I'm not gonna connect yet because first of all, it's not persistent. Uh, so your database is gonna be erased every single time. And then also um, the connection, there's, there's you need, if we're gonna be using MySQLite or PDO or whatever, you have to install uh, different extensions to be able to connect um, the PHP to, to the SQL. So let's go ahead and do that before we waste time. So Docker compose down. Okay, and then this time we have to install some extensions um, or customize our image. And so we're gonna do that with the Docker file. So let's go ahead and look back at our Docker file. And we're not gonna use this anymore. We're gonna be using the PHP Apache image. And I'm going to copy and paste. If my text editor would be working, it'd be faster just to type, but whatever. So we have 7.4 Apache, just like we've been using. Only this time we're going to install some tools. So like if you wanted to install Atom or Sublime Text or, or whatever, um, you would do that. I mean, you wouldn't do that, but you would do that within the Docker file. So if you're gonna install command line tools or, or uh, PHP unit or whatever, all of that stuff would happen inside of Docker file um, with these run commands and other things that are related to Docker file. So let's go ahead and save this and then go back to our Docker compose. And the problem here is that we cannot use, um, we cannot use this image anymore uh, we can't use this image anymore. We have to use um, the Docker file. So, so now, instead of using this image thing, we're going to use uh, build, we're gonna, and then we're going to say context and the dot. So because the the um, the current directory is where our Docker file is located, and then underneath we're going to set this, and that's going to tell us to read the Docker file. So that should work, and that's going to um, that's going to build the image with this additional extension. 
Okay, so I accidentally had some indentation errors. I went ahead and fixed those. I have the source code if you get stuck. And also, it's not Docker, it's Docker file. So go ahead and save that and then run this command. That's embarrassing. I should have known, or it should be obvious what the error was. Anyway, go ahead. And so this works now. So it should rebuild the image. Uh, but once you have it up and running, you can go to back to localhost 8080 and we'll have persistent storage and the connection for our um, for our PHP and MySQL to connect. So we're gonna use the name of the container or the, the service name, so DB for the server, and then root and password, I think it is. Oh yeah, root and example, okay. Root and example. Okay, and once you're in, I have a specific setup for this tutorial. So you wanna create a database and I'm going to name mine company one and then we'll hit save and then we'll want to create a table and I'm gonna name my table name users and we're gonna have a name column and that's going to be a var car or var char, whatever, 25 and then fave color. And then we're also gonna do this one to be a var car of 25. And hit save. Okay, table has been created. And then let's see here. Okay, so I got my PHP script here and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this because this is not supposed to be a PHP tutorial. It's just a... Uh, Gotta have something to show, right? Okay, so index, and I'm going to paste this and get rid of this. Okay, so we've got basically the MySQL I collection or connection, which grabs the DB. You know, if this Docker Compose, if this was called elephant or pie, then you would put elephant or pie in here. And then username, password, database that you're connecting to. And here we're running some SQL queries, uh, basically inserting users with their favorite colors. And then we're selecting, and then we're running the command and we're getting SQL connected and running on our page. So let's go ahead and save that. Uh, and then, uh, and that's again in the source code that is provided. So now let's go ahead and go to localhost, cross our fingers. And there we go. So now we've got a PHP, MySQL, uh, and Apache uh, setup in Docker. And to test this out, let's just go ahead and get, get rid of it. So Docker compose down. And then we'll refresh and see that it's not working anymore. And then we'll do Docker compose up D again and then refresh and now we've got all of our persistent data so we are good to go and we'll cover some more because this isn't this still isn't very useful you still want a bunch of other t command line tools and a bunch of other crap so we'll get that later on so that's it for now though thank you for watching our video if you found it helpful please click on the second link in the description to sign up for our newsletter where we send our best content to help you improve your skills and stay up to date in the industry Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button below and the bell to be notified when we release new tutorials. That's all for this video everyone, have a great day and I'll see you next time.